Hey there, I'm Alan Matthews, and a few weeks ago, I was in a masterclass with the great Sergio Assad from the Assad duo, and he gave this left hand independence workout or procedure to gain independence in the left hand. So I'm going to share it with you here. His basic premise was that in the hand, we have an up and down motion, this is typically moving from the big knuckle here, but we have an up and down motion like this, and then we have a back and forth motion, which is more of the middle and tip joint knuckles, back and forth across the front. So we can go up and down, and we can go back and forth. Between those two, then we can have our guitar playing. So to begin with, we're going to do the tapping. I'm gonna demonstrate this on the third string, fifth fret for the first finger, so fifth position. One, two, three, four, each finger gets its own fret on the fifth position, third string. And then I'm just going to go through each of these uh, in quick succession and you can spend much more time on it in your practice. So to begin with, all the fingers rest lightly. The thumb, by the way, is not, don't bend your thumb like this. Keep your thumb uh, rounded pad on the back of the guitar, just a tip with the tips. And so now we just lightly tap on this fifth fret with the first finger. Now the goal is not to do this. We don't want a big thing. We want to just have just the up and down motion in a nice compact movement. And then move to the second finger, up and down, keep it nice and low. Uh, the third finger, and so the goal of these is to get this isolated so that the other fingers don't have a lot of tension in them and are not moving right along with it. And then the pinky especially is gonna wanna do its rockets, kicks, uh, the snake bite or the uh, or the rocket kick and the goal is to just keep it low keep it low and tapping then you can go with pairs of fingers tapping together so the first and second finger and you want to make sure that the fingers are raising the same height from the fretboard you don't want one going high and the other one staying low keep them the same and then the two and three and then the three and four the one and three, the two and four, and you can also do the one and four. Those are the all the different possibilities. Those are the six possibilities of finger pairs. You might be already doing that with your slur practices. So after we've gotten our tapping done with all the different possibilities of, of notes, we can then alternate tappings as well. So we can tap back and forth between the one and two and tap back and forth between the two and three and you can go slower than this if you'd like to and the three and four the one and three the two and four make sure that the level stays the same on both fingers and the one and four so now we've got those done in each of those ways moving together with tapping and also moving back and forth alternating with tapping so you don't have to be pressing the frets really hard on this it doesn't have to make sound we're not playing anything with the right hand right here, we're just using the left hand. Then next, we can move back and forth. So now we're gonna get into this motion here. Now, when we're doing this, we can keep in mind the way that we tapped and kept our fingers really low to the fretboard. Well, we can do that when we're moving laterally as well. So we don't have to lift way up to go from here to here. We can just move right back and forth very low to the fretboard. So we're gonna move one string in each direction. So over to the second string, then to the fourth string, second string, fourth string, and just go back and forth. And then the goal for this as well is that the other fingers are not moving with it and they're also not tensing up or doing anything funky. You wanna keep it isolated. And then the second finger, same thing, back and forth, keeping it nice and low. Third finger, and the pinky back and forth now what we can do is we can take that same alternation idea from the taps that we did and move one one way and one the other way so the first finger can go to the second string and the second finger can go to the fourth string now when they cross here you want to do this slowly at first because you want them to cross exactly in the air in the exact middle and land at exactly the same point. So the opposite of that would be for one finger to go, then the other, then one, then the other, then one, then the other. So this is not what we're doing one at a time. They're actually crossing in the middle 
and making one smooth motion. And then you could go the same thing to the second and third fingers. And then the third and fourth fingers. And if you really wanted to listen to these, you could actually start playing these on the, but it's really ugly. Um, for the, with, with the right hand. Then you've got your one and three, your two and four, and also your one and four. I can't remember if he's actually said the one and four or not, but it's the, it's the last combination, so you might as well. Then next, um, you could make up different combinations of, um, of the finger pairs to move, but he just really offered this one. So once you've done that, and you can also, you can increase the stretch if you'd really like to with the different fingers um, so that you're doing uh, more, uh, bigger stretches in this way. Um, but then what he recommended was on these, on the first four strings, you could have your one and three, this is a little bit hard to explain, the one and three are in their respective positions on adjacent strings. Fourth, uh, fourth string, third string. And then the two and four are a unit doing that same shape, but on the first and second strings. And then you switch. So then this is going to be moving from here to here. So the one and three move together and the two and four, which start here also go over here. And then they go at the same time so that you've got this the one and three moving opposite the two and four and, and getting this back and forth thing so that your finger's moving. Once you've mastered these independence exercises, you can then use it to move quickly around the fretboard. You just put your lateral shift in there and all of a sudden you've got a very compact, very efficient way of moving the big weird chords and moving them from here to there. and it can just bring up your entire left hand plane much more efficient, keeping it low to the fretboards and having a lot more control for each finger. So I hope you enjoy that. That is Sergio Assad's left hand workout. And please subscribe to this channel and I look forward to seeing you in the near future. Take care.